Virginia Congresswoman recently revealed that she's been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Now, despite the diagnosis, Representative Jennifer Wexton vowed to continue her work in Congress. Her announcement came last week on World Parkinson's Day. She's just 54 years old. Now, according to the Parkinson's Foundation, nearly one million people in America are living with Parkinson's disease. Joining me now is Dr. Kathleen Poston, the chief of the Movement Disorders Division at Stanford Medicine. Thank you so much for joining us, doctor. It's my pleasure. First, you know, let's get down to the basics. What exactly is Parkinson's disease and what are the symptoms? So Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disease, so it affects the brain and it does progress over time as patients continue. It is oftentimes initially diagnosed with symptoms of slowness of movement, but patients can also have shaking in their hands, tremor, or stiffness in the muscles. So primarily recognized by the movements. There's also a lot of non-motor symptoms that also occur, but those are a lot more variable and only affect some patients and not others. So I'm curious, what causes Parkinson's disease? And do you think that more people are being diagnosed because we know more about Parkinson's disease or are more people coming down with it? That's a great question. And I think it's a little bit of both. So what the primary underlying cause of Parkinson's disease is we don't fully understand. We know what happens in the brain, that patients can have abnormal protein aggregation where, where this protein alpha synuclein changes formation and clumps together and causes changes in the brain. But we don't really know what triggers the whole process. I think it's a combination of both more people are being diagnosed with Parkinson's disease because we recognize it better, but also as the population ages, more and more people will get Parkinson's disease because it's most common in individuals that are over the age of 60. Yeah, I mean, that brings me to my next question. Jennifer Wexton, representative um, Jennifer Wexon just diagnosed at age 54. That seems so young, but 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 is it becoming more common on younger patients? It actually is quite common in people in their 50s. Okay. 60 to 65 is the average age of diagnosis, which means there's a lot of people in their 50s who are diagnosed. And actually, it can be as young as 40, 50, and even occasionally people in their 20s. So while 50 is on the slightly younger side, it's actually not that young. And is there a link, you know, because we're talking about people who are generally on the older side in their 60s and their 50s, do they, not that that's old, but is there a link, is there any kind of link between Parkinson's and Alzheimer's? Are they completely different things or are there finding some similarities between the two? It's a great question. So as we get older, we are all at increased risk for both Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Age is for unfortunately for all of us, a very strong uh, predictor of both of those. But they are different diseases. There are people who can have Parkinson's and Alzheimer's that does occur, and there can be some synergy between them. But generally speaking, they have different underlying causes and different clinical manifestations. All right, Dr. Kathleen Poston. And the research is pretty remarkable. So hopefully in, in five years, in 10 years, maybe we're we going to be having a much different conversation when it comes to treatments and cures and diagnosis. I hope so. I hope so. All right, Dr.